So I'm going to start with an accelerating voltage of 5 kV. You can change the accelerating voltage in this part of the software um, interface. So if you click on show panel and in conditions, in the conditions tab, you can change the accelerating voltage here. So I'm going to select 5. Once you have selected the um, accelerating voltage you want, then click the on button to switch the beam on. And now the microscope is switching the HV on. To help you find your sample when you first switch the um, accelerating voltage on, go to the magnification wheel, turn it, counterclockwise to bring the magnification all the way down. When the magnification is all the way down, then what you should see for the multi-holder is the center of the holder here, which will most likely be a bit out of focus. If you have a sample, a single sample inserted in a single holder, you will actually see your sample here already, but all blurry. There are two focus wheels on this microscope, a coarse focus and a fine focus. For the moment, we'll use the coarse focus, but obviously when you are imaging and you're trying to get the perfect image for capture, you will also use the fine focus. Once you've reached a lower magnification, then go to the coarse focus wheel and turn it so that you can bring your image of the center of the holder into focus. Now use the X and Y stage controllers to put your sample in the right position. With the multi-holder, the easiest thing to do is often to place the sample that's directly opposite to the carbon tape in the middle. And then there is another control apart from the X and Y controller wheels that will allow you to rotate the holder so that you move easily from one sample to another. You can see the edge of the stub here and here. So this is one of the stubs that has a sample. Now I'm going to use the stage rotation wheel here to move from the sample that I put in the middle to a neighboring sample. Uh, these are some Drosophila heads. First of all, I'll place one of the heads in the middle and then put it into focus. So use the X and Y stage controllers to put your feature of interest in the middle. Using the course focus, I'll bring my structure of interest broadly into focus. When your structure of interest is not in focus, then this number here does not display the real working distance. But then as you bring your structure of interest into focus, then this here will display the real working distance. So I know that my feature of interest is at 35.8 millimeters from the pole piece of the microscope, more or less. You see that this number is correct as well because it matches the number here. This is set as a, to a default of 35. And when we put our structure of interest in the middle and in focus, the working distance displayed by the microscope uh, software was 35 millimeters. If you switch on the chamber scope here, the chamber scope image shows clearly the end of the pole piece here 
of the microscope, and it shows the samples down here. This image is very useful because you'll be able to see as your sample approach the pole piece and you'll be able to see how close it's getting to the pole piece. You don't want it to get too close. Now I want my structure of interest to be a bit closer to the pole piece of the microscope to be at a shorter working distance. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this wheel until it reaches the working distance that I want to work at. If you keep looking at the chamber scope image as you raise your sample in Z, you'll be able to see your sample getting closer to the pole piece. Now the focus was set for 35 millimeters, which is shown here. So obviously now that your structure of interest is closer to the pole piece, it's at 20 uh, millimeters from the pole piece, then your structure of interest has gone out of focus, which means that you have to use the focus buttons again to bring it back into focus. And as you do that, you should see it coming into focus and obviously you should see that the working distance should ideally be quite close to 20 millimeters. So when the sample is in focus, the Z distance here should match the working distance indicated here. When you have finished putting your sample at the right Z height, switch off the chamber scope here. Now I'm not saying that if you are imaging Drosophila, you should image Drosophila at 5 kV and 20 mm working distance. These are just conditions I'm using here to show you how to use the microscope. You should ask your colleagues that have used the same type of sample to see what conditions they use. You should look in the literature and by all means do a little bit of optimization yourself on the microscope.